Hello and welcome to Rolling With Two. Or should I say, welcome to Rolling With Tunes. <laughs> I'm Will and with me as always is a person who's not bad, she's just drawn that way. Oh, Sarah. And today we're doing a two player perspective and accessibility for Looney Tunes Mayhem. Sarah, tell us a bit about this game. All right. Looney Tunes Mayhem is a tactical combat game of wackiness. The goal is to collect victory points, which can be done by either knocking out an opponent's tune or from certain places on the board. The first team to five victory points wins. All right, Will, so how does the game change for two players? Actually, the rules are meant for two players. Mm -hmm. It's the three and four player counts that there are alternate rules, rules on the back of the book. In They're, the back. Towards in the back. back, towards the back. And there is no bot. Nope. So, although there might be for three players or something. No, I think it just distributes the characters. Because in a two-player game, each player plays two, two characters. Because ca yes. you're playing a team. So I think it just splits. I don't even... I didn't look at how the three-player... Because that sounds really weird how you would split. Maybe it's just one character for each. I don't know. We didn't look at it. Sorry. No bot for a two-player game. No bots. That's important. Yep. So, um, as for issues at a two-player count... We couldn't think of any. No, no. This is uh, rather uh, solidly mm -hmm. balanced for two players. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is very good for a two-player count because the main rules are designed for two players. Yes. So let's go on to accessibility. So there is some initial like cognitive overload and just in learning. Um, I mean, because it looks like it should be light, but there's actually a lot of depth in what you can do and how you interact with everything that's going on. Yeah, additionally, everything's icons, so you mm -hmm. have to learn that. So while you're trying to figure out the depth of the game, you're also trying to parse out this information, right. essentially using a new language. Yeah. What does a burst mean? Um, and you have to keep checking back, oh, melee attack. What yes. does the target mean? Uh, range attack. I mean, after a while, some of that it makes sense, but also also because this looks like it would be such a great introductory game, which I think it still is, uh, there's just that slight learning curve. Yes. Additionally, the rules are not the clearest. Um, yeah, there are many uh, instances where the rules are open to or open to interpretation. Yeah, it's ambiguity. Yes, uh, I think our biggest issue was when it came to obstacles. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, the designer came on to he, BGG. One of the people on the team. Design I don't scene. think it was the designer specifically. Anyways, anyone, so, offi someone official, official came on and answered, gave us a diagram, and I'm like, oh. Neither of us had it right. Yeah. So, yeah. I thought obstacles could be placed anywhere. Sarah thought they could only be placed around the character. Turns out, wherever your character is, you look at the locations around them and can target any one of those locations and places on any one of those edges. Correct. And the thing is, uh, this person, and so this is on BGG, you can go to the BGG forum and find it's like an official uh, Q&A or something like that. Um, and they, they gave a chart and it was perfectly clear. Something that should have been in the rules. Yeah. Because it just had like one sentence that said, you can put an obstacle on any adjacent location. Yeah. The other times I find the rules are a little open to interpretation is you have mayhem cards and mm -hmm. mayhem cards are what breaks the rules and changes how things work. So they'll state things very clearly. Um, however, there's no explanation as to the ramifications of when this happens. Uh, for example, let's say you had a character and they got knocked out. The other person gets a victory point. That means they get removed off the board, and then they'll get reset. One of the cards says, remove a character off the board. Does that count as a knockout? Yeah. Uh, do they come back in during the normal reset? What's, what, how does the rules work here? So you have open rules interpretations yeah. happening uh, kind of around the cards uh, right. as well. Unfortunately. Yeah. So that's going to present some challenges. Yes. Uh, I guess the biggest thing is, as long as your group agrees, try playing it that way. But if you get into like a really terrible situation, like with us for the obstacles, we ended up in a stalemate because we were playing it so wrong. Neither <laughs> of us could get 
anywhere. And so we just quit the game. So if you get to that point, something is probably interpreted incorrectly. Uh, so go to BGG. Yes. Okay. Um, these are some minor things. The one and the five uh, damage tokens are the same size. I mean, it's not a huge deal. It's just every other token is a unique shape uh, or size. Um, so just kind of wish that had also been um, a difference. Um, a lot of the components will have black text on a pale red background. Now, there are some colorblind folks who have issues with uh, red and black with text and backgrounds. This should not present a problem, just want to bring it to your attention. If you have good lighting, I don't think it's gonna be a problem for anybody because it is a pale red, kind of like what's on the box here. Um, oh, lastly, Mayhem cards are kept secret, um, but everything on there is very clear the, in, in terms of contrast and the iconography is also really good. Yeah, when it comes to the cards, there's one icon that tells you essentially when it can be played. Mm -hmm. If it's a flag, it's at the beginning of the turn. If it's a, like a cube with an arrow, it means when you're placing dice to activate your characters. And then when there's like a stop sign with a hand, that means it usually interrupts something. Right. Uh, otherwise, the text is fully spelled out as to what the card does. Yeah. And so what it does, accessibility, we've talked about the icons are all very distinct. Um, there's no confusing anything and the text is all really easy to read. So really in general, it feels like this is a very accessible game. Yes. All right. Conclusion. So for two players, would you recommend Looney Tunes Mayhem? Yes, it is designed for two players. Yes. It's excellent. Yes, I agree. <laughs> it is ideal for a two-player game uh, and especially fits if you're in for mm -hmm. that skirmish uh, with a bit of, oh, well, actually a heavy bit of tactics yes. involved. Agreed. Accessibility. Um, yes, I mean, you are going to have, you are possibly going to have some cognitive challenges with learning the rules, especially if you have any questions about the rule book. But other than that, component wise, they did a really good job with uh, making this very visually accessible. Yeah, the other interesting thing I found is despite all the complexity that you can find mm -hmm. in the depth of the strategy, uh, your turns are simple. Oh yeah. You take a die, you put it on one of your tunes that doesn't have a die, activate them. It does a free move, can do their ability, and that's it. Yep. So very simple to play yes. depth in the playing of it. Correct. So accessibility wise, yes. Very much. All right. That will do it for us here at Rolling With Two. Sarah, if you were a tune, would you have a funny voice? And what would it sound like? I, I think, I mean, do all tunes have to have a funny voice? Yes. Hmm. Well, then I would think it would be something uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, like ditzy. <laughs> okay. That's what I think. All right. And that will do it for us. <laughs> and why would you ever roll with just one when you can be rolling, rolling with, with two? two? And remember, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can reach out to us on the various social media platforms at Rolling with Two. That's T-W-O. We are on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And if you have time, check out the other content Nanaman has found for you. Because remember, he's rolling with you.